become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books, scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding. Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookworm here. Today I'd like to share a very, very informative article I read, written by Steve Reeves, on how to develop a brutally powerful vice-like grip and strong, powerful forearms. In the article, Steve Reeves recounts the great strongmen of the past and athletes of at least the 1950s, which was his present time, and how they developed their incredible forearm strength and therefore were able to uh, perform these incredible feats of strength. In the article, Steve Reeves also emphasizes the importance of developing powerful forearms and grip power for your overall success in bodybuilding with this quote. As the great Reeves said, if you can't hold it, then you can't lift it. Enjoy. Very, very wise words from the great Steve Reeves. Within the article, Steve Reeves emphasizes not only the importance of developing power in the forearms, but size. And this is very evident when we see this classic photo of Reeves on the beach. I mean, we can see his incredible uh, yeah, size in the forearms. You can see how thick and strong his forearms look, right? And of course, you know, having this strength in his forearms allows him to be able to, to hold heavier weights, especially in the incline dumbbell press. We, we all know, at least a lot of us that, that have... Um, that are fans of Steve Reeves have seen those famous photos of Reeves pressing those those uh, 110 pound dumbbells on the incline press and curling some impressive poundages. Of course he can because he can hold it, right? And as he says, the reason for developing size and powering your forearms is that it will automatically step up your all-round lifting ability, whether it is in bodybuilding or weightlifting. Very wise words, very logical. Um, but of course. As he says, it takes time and it's hard work. And importantly, though, once you develop the size and power in your forearms and the strength in your grip and in, in your fingers, it is strength that is kept for life. And you don't have to look far to prove this. Just look at the um, average uh, labor worker, how strong their hands are and their forearms. Just give them a good handshake and they'll rip your arm off, right? They, they got such thick forearms, strong hands, right? And of course, because they work day in, day out, hard work, and that's what it takes to develop a strong grip and forearms, right? And it is strength that is kept for life. Now, in the article, Reeves does outline a bodybuilding routine uh, featuring, of course, exercises with barbells and dumbbells. But what I found most fascinating was the individual strongmen that he talked about, the stories about their strength feats and their incredible unorthodox methods for developing strength in their in the grip, strength between the fingers and, and, and of course size in the in the forearms. So I hope you enjoy now the rest of this uh, particular video where Steve recounts all these amazing stories. One of the things that Steve Reeves talks about in the article is weightlifting for the development of the forearms. A lot of people say that Reeves never used uh, weightlifting exercises, but he definitely did. He actually used um, a lot of cleaning at, at, uh, during, during the basic fundamental period of his training during the first few years. And of course, later moved on to isolation exercises, but that's besides the point. He does recommend using uh, exercises such as the hang clean and the hang snatch, uh, which will develop the strength in the forearms. And he gives some excellent examples, of course, of weightlifters during the 50s of the 40s and 50s, such as the Egyptian um, Olympic weightlifter Tuni and another uh, very famous here featured John Davis. I mean, he's one of the greatest heavyweight weightlifters, Olympic weightlifters of all time in all of history. Here you can see the incredible develop on, uh, development of his thick forearms. His, 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 I mean, you can see the thickness in his wrist and how um, why his forearms are developed and of course, therefore was able to uh, break many, many records. One of the things that he, uh, Reeves recalls is seeing John Davis walk up to Sig Klein's gym, that's three flights of stairs, and around the block with 100 pound dumbbells held at the block, so held at the block end, not held at the handles, held at the weight block end. Imagine that, the strength in the hands, the grip, the wrist, the forearms, to be able to hold the weight, 100 pound dumbbells, that's 45 kilos, at the block and walk around the block and then three flights of stairs up to Sig Klein's gym. Incredible strength. 
Now, another brilliant story that Reeves recounts is of Mac Bachelor, who was known to have, have hands and forearms like steel. He was actually a wrist turning champion. Wrist turning is is the old term for um, you know hand wrestling, right? Um, and so he was very very famous for um, being a, a wrist turning champion at, at the time. He, he had this strong man look. You can see his his uh, fantastic mustache, right? He looked like a strong man from the past, right? And he was a strong man. And one of the tricks that he loved doing or feats of strength was bending beer bottle caps between his fingers. You can see that. It's incredible. And I've even blown up um, an image for you there and, and, and increased the contrast so you can see the uh, bent beer, uh, sorry, bent uh, bottle caps, uh, beer bottle caps between his fingers. That is incredible. And um, the way he actually trained for this act was using r small rubber balls, which he would squeeze between his fingers fingers right and so he was able to develop incredible strength between his fingers and develop an incredible grip of course and um, the rest followed and he would squeeze these small rubber balls during the day a very uh, inventive innovative and yes very unorthodox method for developing uh, strength in the in the fingers it's incredible after uh, talking about Mac Bachelor uh, Reeves talks about leverage work and thick handled dumbbells which has kind of come back I guess into vogue these days where a lot of people that, that are trying to st uh, strengthen their forearms and wrists and, and uh, their, their grip strength do use thick handled dumbbells and leverage work. One of the um, people that Reeves highlights in the article who actually used leverage belts to, to um, yeah to help him with uh, his athletic endeavors was actually um, Frank Stranahan, a champion golfer of the past, and actual also, as you can see, he was actually also a physique star back then. So um, you know, he he obviously practiced what he preached. He was a champion golfer, but also uh, really enjoyed working on his physique and developed a rather classical physique. You can see that wonderful image there, and you'll find many images of Frank Stranahan online. He had a very very classical physique, but but also had you know function with that physique. He was able to become a champion golfer, and of course. The advantage of using leverage bells, as Reeves suggests, is that it allows for progression because, for example, you can use a barbell, uh, a very simple barbell, or of course, uh, of course, if that's too too difficult, a dumbbell. The point is you can use a, a, um, a metal rod with weight on one end, and it allows for progression because you can slowly add uh, weight to, uh, to the end. Uh, another, of course, modern uh, application of leverage work is the use of sledgehammers, which you'll see also on many YouTube channels. Of course, this is excellent for developing the grip and wrist strength. Also is, of course, the use of thick handled dumbbells. Now, one of my favorite characters that Reeves recounts in this particular article has to be Van Sittart, the strong man from the past known as the man with the iron grip. Of course, his real name was not Van Sittart, it was actually Charles Van Sittart. And this guy, I mean, he definitely had an, you know, an iron grip, an iron forearm. I mean, you can see the fantastic development. Uh, again, very, very typical of the bronze men, strong men of the past, ripped to shreds. I mean, look at the veins on his arms, incredible development, pre-steroid era. This guy was a brutally strong. He could tear tennis balls in half. He could crunch bottles by contracting and flexing his arm, and he could crush clay pipes between his fingers. I, I have no doubt that Mac Bachelor was also inspired by Van Sittard because of the... Um, the uh, feet of strength of crushing clay pipes of course bachelor bent uh, beer bottle caps um, and of course he probably also copied uh, Van Sittard's mustache but yeah Van Sittard is a whole other story and definitely worth covering in a separate video what a brilliant strongman he was the man with the iron grip now if you'd like to learn more about the training principles of Steve Reeves and how he developed his physique to win the Mr. America title the Mr. World and the Mr. Universe the greatest titles at the time you can uh, check out my website www.goldenerabookman.com for self-written books on his uh, methods for developing the calves, how Steve Reeves developed his broad shoulders, and what he did to develop his tiny, tiny waist, all available on www.goldenerabookworm.com. 
So I do hope you've enjoyed all of these stories and figures that Steve Reeves has talked about in this particular article, recounting the stories and great feats of the strongmen of the past, as well as some of the, uh, I guess, some of the uh, sport athletes of the uh, 1950s. Truly um, incredible when you start analyzing what all of these athletes did back then, especially the strongmen. Um, the influence they actually also had on silver era bodybuilders is quite telling when you start reading uh you know these these articles by reeves by reg park by charles atlas it's just like we look at the golden and silver era bodybuilders of the past for motivation inspiration we, we actually try and research like i do what they did equally reeves park and and, and charles atlas and, and all the other greats they looked towards their past um, you know, looking at the strongmen and, and how they develop their physiques, always trying to learn and improve from it. So it's truly um, a fantastic read for me. And I do hope you've enjoyed uh, this look at Reeves' mentality, at his principles and um, of how he tried to develop great power in his forearms and in his grip. And I can't emphasize it better than again showing this phenomenal photo of Reeves again handling 110 pound dumbbells look at the strength of his forearms you can see them flexed veiny the tendons are bursting through the skin you know and, and you can see the strength the, 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 the fantastic development in those forearms as he handles those those are uh, extremely heavy dumbbells I have to say fantastic and you can see that he applied the information that he researched and learned about the strongmen in the past so i hope you've enjoyed watching this video if you have please give the video a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't to the golden era bookworm leave me your comments and thank you for watching if you uh if you'd like to support my research please donate via paypal subscribe and become a patent uh, a, a patreon i should say and please visit my website for out of print books and courses on old school bodybuilding and uh, please get in touch via email if you wish to uh, collaborate or pass on your bodybuilding literature and relics. That's it for me. Hope you've enjoyed the video once again. This is the Golden Era Bookworm. Bye for now. To take full advantage of my collaboration with Old School Labs, please visit their website and choose from their marvelous range of supplements using my code BOOKWORM12. And for an entertaining look at the history of bodybuilding's supplement industry, I would highly recommend watching Subs the Movie, which I have collaborated in, available at Amazon Prime and Vimeo.